Um, John is a pioneer in the study of the, the Maltino. You've got an incredible collection of fossils, fossil leaves, uh, fructifications and insects. He's been most of his life and he's still busy with that. Um, he also has an incredible garden with 43 garden sculptures portraying the geology of Gondwana and the world in general. Um, but today, um, we're remembering Martin de Witt uh, and John, together with Martin, created the concept of Gondwana Live Corridors and the Africa Live Corridors. And today he's going to tell us what is currently happening about them. Welcome, John, and over to you. Cheers. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you invite, for inviting me to do this talk. Suddenly appearing about a month ago and, and inviting me to do this talk. Fantastic. And thanks very much to Nolene for organizing it all. And sorry that we're a bit delayed here because we didn't quite get it right on our side. But, but here we go. Okay, so, so this, this is very much in memory of Martin. Um, and our association started, started um, in the late 1980s when he was busy with his geological map of Gondwana. Um, and that is what you can see on the screen. Is that right? Yes, the geological map of Gondwana. That's right. Yes. Um, he, he was always extremely eager on the, on the Gondwana supercontinent. And let's say in 1987 or so, he, he invited me to join a whole lot about this to help him put this together. And my particular job was, was on the Permo-Triassic correlations of Gondwana. I was busy with that at the time, related to our Maltino fossil plants. So I think well, this could, could help a bit on, on correlations to help get this map together. So, so that's where our whole association starts in 1988 when this, when this map was published of Martin's. And this, and this is a picture of Martin on the right hand side at our, in our garden, rather more recent than that. Okay, to the next slide. Keeping Gondwana alive. If we jump about 10 years further ahead, in 1998, Martin organized the International Gondwana Symposium in Cape Town at the University of Cape Town. And, and I was part of that. And we essentially started our Gondwana Alive project, Gondwana Alive, keeping Gondwana alive at, at that conference. Um, and here is our logo for that, for that uh, project, which we created around about that time. So I'm trying to symbolically show the, the ice for Antarctica and the, and the elephants and the, and the bush well for Africa, etc. Okay. And then the Gondwana Alive Corridors. Um, this preempted our Africa Alive Corridors project. The Gondwana Alive project, uh, Corridors, we started, started over the whole of Gondwana, uh, connecting a, a network of 40, uh, 40 corridors, each say 1,000 to 5,000 kilometers long, averaging say 2,000 and 50 kilometers wide. Um, here, the idea being to tell the story of Gondwana from, from, from throughout Earth history, basically, through until today and into, into tomorrow, the future. Um, so we, we put a lot of time into, into putting all this together. And from this then evolved our Africa Life Corridors, which I will focus on more today. Uh, and before we get there, so this, this, is, this is Martin at our home. He and Ditsege Madoki are, are, are holding our earth time pole, which I did show Chris Hatton a, a week or so ago. This, this, this is one of our 43 garden sculptures, the earth time pole, and it runs through the 4.6 billion years of earth history. And, and on this particular pole, it, it shows the major uh, supergroups in South Africa, in particular our end of South Africa up here in the Transvaal. And there Martin's hand is holding the Transvaal supergroup, which was a great favorite of his. 
Okay, and we, we developed together this triptych of, of projects, all, all linked to, to promoting biodiversity and stemming the sixth extinction. So first on the left hand side towards Gondwana alive. And that subheading, uh, the aim promoting biodiversity and stemming the sixth extinction. And then Earth Alive, 101 strategies towards stemming the sixth extinction and global warming developed from that. And then the Africa Alive corridor. So it's a triptych, Gondwana Alive, Earth Alive, Africa Alive, all with that same fundamental purpose. And, and, and these we've been developing over the last two decades together. Frequently, we done in Port Elizabeth and Martin up here, here in Pretoria. And here, those same three projects. And I did show this one to Chris as well. And welcome to anybody else who would love to come and I can show you all our garden sculptures. But this is one of our garden sculptures. And here you can see GA stands for Gondwana Alive. And EA stands for Earth Alive, and AA stands for Africa Alive. And you can click that, that Gondwana Alive on the left hand side. To the top right, you can see a, a different view of those two stones. Um, and you can read GA in there, GA for Gondwana Alive. And then these ripple marked quartzites in the middle, I've got four of these ripple marked quartzites from the Machalis work very nearly half the age of the Earth, it's say at, at 2,1 billion years ago. Earth alive, those ripple marks from the Machalisberg showing Earth wonderfully alive at 2,1 billion years ago, in man sea. And symbolically, these four ripple marked stones also show us the four seasons of the year. They show us the, the north, south, east, west, uh, the points of the compass and also I'm always concerned about grandchildren and the, and the children of the future. I happen to have four grandchildren so, so those four ripple marked stones represent my four grandchildren. And then to Africa Alive on the, on the right hand side and if one stands just in front of it like we're doing here you can clearly see Africa Cape Town in the front and there on the other side of the fence uh, beyond the Sahara Desert, you, you can see in that, that stone at the far corner is, is, is Egypt. Um, Earth, Gondwana Life, Earth Life, Africa Life, uh, one, one of my 43 garden sculptures. Okay, to go, to go back to towards Gondwana Life, the first of that trip tissue projects. And here, th this, this volume of ours was published in 1999, um, a year after that uh, conference at Martins in Cape Town, the International Gondwana, uh, International Gondwana Symposium. So this, a bunch of us got together, I, I was the editor, and we managed to get this published in the next year after that symposium in 1999. And I would like to just read a, a couple of the endorsements we had. We got many super endorsements from, from global leaders uh, supporting this project. And going to the top left on the left hand side there, President Nelson Mandela. This is at the core of his endorsement. I endorse the ideals of Gondwana Alive because it approaches, as I see it, the very core of two concern, concerns most dear to me, the children of today's world and the children of tomorrow's world. Amongst many other things, he was extremely concerned about the children of today's world and the children of tomorrow's world, and that we should bequeath to them a world at least as least as good as the one we knew that we know. Okay, and another endorsement just below that, Kofi Annan, the key from his endorsement. It is my hope that this book will reach out to all the people of the world and serve as a catalyst for action to steer us away from the dangerous course of business as usual. Now that's a wonderful phrase, phrase from Kofi Annan, who was the Secretary General of the United Nations at that time. The dangerous course of business as usual. And it seems like we haven't changed that course at all in, in, in the subsequent 20 years. 
we are still conducting everything globally, business as usual, and we have gone considerably further downhill since then. Although this project is promoting biodiversity and stemming the sixth extinction, we, we have escalated that whole process since then, sadly. Although we put a lot of effort and energy and love into this, we haven't actually achieved anything yet. And then, for instance, Jane Goodall, the chimpanzee lady. We are endangering the future of life on Earth. This is her talking 20 years ago. The Gondwana Alive project calls us to take action before it is utterly too late, 20 years ago. And Edward Wilson, the, the chap who invented the word biodiversity, and is certainly, the, surely, in my view, the Charles Darwin of, of our generation. This is just the kind of project of science to, to the public we need worldwide to save biodiversity, his words. And we haven't yet saved biodiversity, and we must, we simply must. Okay. Earth Alive. 101 strategies towards stemming the, the sixth extinction and global warming. This, uh, the International Year of Planet Earth had their Congress in Tanzania, Arusha in 2008. And Martin and I went up there together with, with uh, 10 students, 10 students uh, through, through high school ages, from early teenager to later teenager. Uh, 10 students from South Africa came up with us. And, and we played this game which we launched at 101 Strategies, a, a game with 101 playing cards you can see on the left hand side there. Um, and, and we were joined there with, with 10 students from Tanzania. And these 10 students in the foyer to the Congress, with two people coming out all the time for a few days, we were playing together this 101 Strategies game to keep Earth alive. Um, and President Kikweti uh, popped in now and again. He was the president at that time in Tanzania. He was highly enthusiastic. Um, and it was wonderful to, to communicate with these various 20 students since then and, and find out how this influenced them. Um, we do need to get this, this pack of playing cards into the world once again and, and really work for us. Okay. And here are the African Alive Corridors. Which, which I will focus on mostly just now. Um, the idea here being that we, have, that we have 20 corridors, we've selected a network of 20 corridors crisscrossing Africa. And you can see them in the map there. Um, each again, uh, uh, 1,000 to 2,000 to 3,000 kilometers wide and say 50 kilometers in, in diameter. And together that network tell us the story of Africa through the last four billion years. And each of those corridors tells a chapter in that story far better than anywhere else. And we, we will pick a selection of those and just and just speak about them just now. Um, but just, just reading through these other little bits, the, these bits are, are highlighted uh, from, from the, from the uh, poster to the left there. The idea is to tell the holistic geological, biological, cultu cultural story of the mother continent with everyone as co-custodians of over 4 billion years of unmatched, irreplaceable heritage. There's geo-heritage and bio-heritage and cultural heritage. Africa is absolutely unique amongst continents in terms of those three three uh, in terms of geology, biology, culture, in terms of the it's the overall heritage that we have. And here is Nelson Mandela again. For the children of today's world and the children of tomorrow's world, 1999. And, and, and we had this African word down there, finding a new way forward to, towards the dignity of all humans and all other species. That's the idea. So it's not just about all humans, it's about all species. And again, just reading that bit on the right hand side, the colossus amongst continents, Africa, the womb of humanity and culture. We all know by now through, through science and repeated science that, that Africa is the womb of humanity. And it is the fountainhead of art along the Homo sapiens corridor along the Cape Coast. 
and it and it is the stem of human language um, and, and it is the cradle where where we evolved from the other great apes it, it, it is the heartland of Gondwana and Pangaea, that is Africa, the heartland of Gondwana and Pangaea, the center of Earth's geobiodiversity, and one can argue that quite readily going to particular spots in Africa and showing that. Um, and it embraces Earth's ge geodiversity hotspots and the terrestrial biodiversity hotspots. And very significantly, be, being the womb of of Homo sapiens, we were hunter gatherers here for some three hundred thousand years in Africa, and then we and, and and then we colonized the world out of Africa, and and as we went and as we evolved as a, as a species out of Africa, we hunted unfortunately, very unfortunately, each continent we came to out of Africa, we hunted out the megafauna. Um, so incredibly, Africa is the only continent that still has an intact me megafauna. Not the numbers that it used to have, but the species are still basically around. Um, and the other side of the coin, but it is the continent of the greatest human suffering and the place of our biggest dreams, Africa. Huge continent. Okay, next. Okay, here... We, we are, for the last few years, we, Martin and I and, and many contributors have been very busy putting together our Africa Life, Life Corridors book. In fact, two books, the Africa Life Corridors, which tells the total story of Africa, and the Homo sapiens corridor, which is picking one of those corridors and telling the story of it. Um, so here, going, to, go, going into, into the introduction to the to the Africa Life Corridors volume that, we, that we're busy with and that we will finish. Um, here shows one to 10 of those corridors in brief summary. And we, we will pick a few of these and go into them nearer just now. And here's um, the next two page spread focusing on the 11th to the 20th corridor from the Khoisan Kalahari corridor to the, to the sixth extinction corridor. Um, and again, we will focus on a few of these, going into them a bit closer in the slides that, that, that follow. Okay, starting with the cradle to cradle corridor. And to show you that on the, on the map on the left hand side, we've highlighted it in yellow. The, the cradle to cradle, cradle corridor, you can see it still closer up on that little inset to the left there. It, it essentially runs through from the bottom end of the Kruger Park, up through the Kruger Park, Park through the Transvaal Drakensberg and across to Gauteng, there's Pretoria, and Joe, Joe Bill, just south of it. So, so that particular corridor, and, 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 and just to show parts of this right-hand slide here again, that sinuous strip of territory running from the Barberton Mountains to the Fjordafort Dome, represents by far the most continuous passage through geological time preserved anywhere on Earth. Remarkably, we're sitting right there. Um, it traverses the planet's top podium geological hotspots in a story of earth, life, and cultural superlatives. And, 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 and this, this photograph that we see here, the, these red dots on the green, this, this is a photograph of Martins, of the earliest known fossil bacteria, which come from, from the cradle of life in, in the Barberton Mountains, the earliest known fossil bacteria on Earth. It's something like 3,6, 3,7 billion years. And, and we, so we run from the cradle of, of life through to the cradle of humanity up in the, um, up, 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 up in the, in the cradle of, of humanity to the northwest of Johannesburg, which is the most comprehensive site anywhere in Africa. Um, in, ter in terms of the number of localities, the, and, and there are many more localities to be found there in the cradle of humanity, telling the story of humanity over the last three billion, three million years or so of, of, of uh, evolution through various species of, 
of, of Australopithecus and then various species of Homo, of Homo and then through to Homo sapiens. So, so it's, it's an incredible corridor sitting here in, in what used to be called the Transvaal. Okay, to the next one. And here we jump through to the Great Karoo Corridor. And that obviously runs through the, the Great Karoo. Um, you can see it highlighted on, on the left, number three. The, the, in, in, in South Africa and, and there in more detail. And each of these corridors includes, includes 20 heritage nodes telling the story of that corridor in particular. So again, let, let, let us read here for the Great Karoo Corridor, um, which our subtitle for it was a Pangea through the mother of all extinctions. So the, the Great Karoo uh, spans the, the end thermal extinction event, the mother of all extinctions. And it, it, it traverses, okay, let's just read here, to, to traverse the Karoo from the Drakensberg to the Western Cape, is to walk through Pangean time more expansively than on any other continent. No other geological basin worldwide can match the Karoo as a library un unfolding the evolution of life through this critical interval of some 150 million years across the end Permian from the, from the Late Carboniferous, Carboniferous through the Permian into the Triassic and into the Jurassic. A, a, a wonderful, a wonderful textbook of, li of life through that time. And it, it, it occupies about half of South Africa. Um, okay, th through to the next one. Oh, and yes, in terms of life, the, the origin of mammals, the origin of dinosaurs uh, are, are, are from that time. The, the heyday of the gymnosperms, and this is the Maltino tree order, which, which Chris Hatton mentioned that I'm working on, and I devote at least half my time every day to um, the Maltino fossil tree order, which represents the heyday of the gymnosperm, the richest, the richest deposit globally in, in the Triassic, telling of that story. Okay. Then let us jump through to corridor eight, and you can again see it highlighted there on the left, the Eastern Rift Valley. And, and this tells the story of the evolution of through to Homo sapiens from, from, from say, uh, five or six million years ago. And, and incredibly down through the Rift Valley, in a number of localities and that beautiful situation where because of continental drift, because Africa is splitting down that rift valley, we, we have lake deposits in which in which these various fossil sites are, occur. And because of that drifting, we, we have volcanic occurrences. So we can date those deposits very beautifully. So it tells a wonderful story through through the last five million years of the evolution of the evolution of of the hominins through to, through to ourselves. Okay, and to the next one. The Homo sapiens corridor along the Cape Coast, number 10, along the southern Cape Coast, from north of Cape Town through Cape Town and through to, to Port Elizabeth and beyond. The 20 nodes, a, a number of localities on the coastline along that corridor to tell the story of Homo sapiens of our species now, um, from 200,000 years ago to, to relatively recently, far better than anywhere else um, along that Cape Coast, wonderful Cape Coast that everybody knows is, uh, for, for its beauty, for the, for the whales, for the, for, the, for the diversity of plants, for those mountains, but, but very, very few people, if they aren't working on archaeology or geology, know that it happens to be the Homo sapiens corridor, the corridor that far better than anywhere else tells our story over 200,000 years. Um, so, so, so just let us read this bit again here on the right. With respect to superlatives and uniqueness, this corridor is difficult to match. At a succession of some 20 sites along the spectacular southernmost coastal coastline of Africa, 
is preserved without fear. The archaeological story about human, Homo sapiens sapiens, cultural evolution. From our first mutual ancestor, mitochondrial Eve, at some 200,000 years ago, included are our earliest known link between the tides and the moon, art and jewelry, the bow and arrow, all manner of things. But the first in our cultural evolution found along, along those coastal sites. Wonderful place, wonderful, wonderful. Um, and, and since we started putting this together, of course, science advances all the time. We speak of 200,000 years. Well, the earliest site here is, is just short of 200,000 years. But since then, of course, in the last couple of years, with more science across Africa, our origins now appear to go back to about 300,000 years. And we're still not quite sure where, where mitochondrial Eve, where our mutual ancestor actually arose in Africa. Science will show that surely in the next few years. <coughs> But it's, it's, it's an incredible story, and it's a story of Africa. Okay, the next one. Sahara Paradise Lost. Here we head up into the middle of the Sahara Desert. Um, again, you can see it highlighted number 12. Um, and this one can consider to be the greatest art gallery on Earth, sitting there in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Rock art. Rock art. Uh, along a succession of, of sites in the mountains, in the, in the desert landscape there, the Tibesti Highlands, the Ahagar Highlands. And if you've ever flown across Africa, it, it, you, 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 you fly for ages across that desert. Absolute pure, pure desert down there. But beautiful are these mountains, these, these Tibesti Highlands and the Ahagar Highlands that stand out in that desert and in which this, this art gallery is preserved. Here, here's, here's one picture of, of, of a series of giraffes from that, from that art gallery. And, and let me just read this text to you again here. Along the peaks of the Sahara is another of the great African rock art galleries that portray parts of human history. This Sahara gallery tells us an especially pertinent story at a time when we have, belatedly, awakened to the uncertainties of global warming. A 12,000 year span of rock painting and petroglyphs depicting different animals during this time. Mirror, and these mirror the drying out of the Sahara over that 12,000 year period. From verdant paradise, it, it, it really was a, a, a beautiful woodland 12,000 years ago. And now there's this huge, vast, biggest desert on earth to the world's most extensive desert and and these the the, the various art galleries with which the, the the art sites which you can more or less put in chronological order show us first the oldest of them show us the, the animals that were living at that time the natural the the, the indigenous animals of that time more or less like in the Karoo, in, in the in the Kruger national park let's say and then slowly these disappear and slowly they are replaced by, by farming animals. And then the farms disappear and, 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 and then you get camels. And so it, it tells the story of the Sahara paradise lost over 12,000 years. Okay, then to the Valley of the Pharaohs. And as we know, everything on earth is, is fully interdependent biological, geological, cultural, everything, soils, plants, humans, animals, um, remarkably linked to that story of Sahara paradise lost, the development of the Sahara, is the growth of the civilization along the, along the Nile Valley. Of course, it, it's impossible to build a civilization out there in the desert, but along the Nile Valley, where, where, where you've got stark desert on either side, of this beautiful um, green valley and this perpetual supply of, of, of water was developed as one of the very earliest of civilizations. Um, and yeah, it, it runs from something like 5,000 years ago to 2,000 years ago. And it owes its origin 
to, to, to a large extent, again, the focus along that river and the, and, and the security along that river that, that you can't really be invaded from outside because it's dead. So you've got this beautiful, secure, long river valley along which to, to, to create the civilization. And, and what an incredible civilization it was. I, 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 I heard a video just, just a, a week or so ago for, from, a, from a chap who spent masses of time up there climbing the pyramids, going into all the different um, rooms within the pyramids, studying the pyramids. And, and one thing he, he emphasizes is, and, and he was focusing on the Great Pyramid in, in the ancient kingdom and saying that, and if you just look at these, the, the, this, this is not the, the, the Great Pyramid here, but for the Great Pyramid, if, if you, for instance, take the diameter of the base of the pyramid, or if you take the height of the pyramid, um, or various other uh, aspects of the pyramid, the incredible thing is that they are now discovering is that, is, is that this is linked in terms of mathematically precisely linked to the diameter, to the circumference of the Earth at the equator, to, to, the, to the radius of the Earth through its center, um, even, even to wobbling on, on its axis. The, these numbers can be found uh, incredibly in, in, the, in, in the height and breadth, etc., of, of, these, of these pyramids. Somehow this civilization was far ahead of, 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 we, of we, where we ever thought they were, that, that, that they knew the earth to an incredible degree. We thought we only discovered that the earth was, was a planet a few hundred years ago, um, but, but they knew that, and they knew its dimensions exactly, some incredible how that nobody had a clue how. Somehow they knew its dimensions. This, this civilization down the, down the Nile Valley which has since disappeared around about, around about 2,000 years ago, it, it disappeared and then the Roman Empire took over. Well, the Greeks and then the Romans. Um, civilizations come and go. We're this huge global civilization now and, and where are we coming? Where have we come from? Where are we going? What is this coronavirus doing to us? Okay, let's... The mirror of history um, and, and this you can see is on the west, northwest coast of Africa, number 17. And just very briefly, the idea behind that particular corridor is reflecting the, the history of, of Western colonization, of, of European colonization of the world. Um, and the earliest ships traveling down the west coast of Africa, European ships from Portugal starting, in, in the 1400s, late 1400s, colonizing, colonizing Africa and colonizing the rest of the world. So first we colonized the world out of Africa, then, then uh, uh, and, and then on foot as, as hunter-gatherers, then we colonized the world again, this time out of Europe, in ships. And we were not very nice along the way, I'm afraid to say. We, we, we started endless wars in that process, endless colonial wars, within Europe and, and anywhere else. And, and one very unpleasant thing we did as well during, during these last few hundred years whilst we were colonizing the world, is, and, and that is reflected greatly in this, in this corridor on the west coast, is the, is the, international, is, is the Atlantic slave trade, which lasted some 350 years. Um, and, it, and it, something like 20 million Africans were taken into slavery across, across the ocean to, to, to North and South America. And for 350 years, at least Western civilization considered that quite okay. It's not, it, it wasn't okay. It simply was not okay. But then we thought it was okay. Um, Okay, let, let us stop there on the middle of history. Um, so it, it, it reflects uh, Western civilization and Western colonization of the world and, and the slave trade and, and a lot of other things. Okay. 
the sixth extinction. And here, here, of course, the sixth extinction is happening all across Africa, all across the world, and it and it is absolute, it is absolutely, it was absolutely set alight by Homo sapiens, no doubt at all. Um, we, we've exacerbated the extinction of of of, 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 of life and, and of, of global warming. But here in Africa, although it is everywhere seen, perhaps that corridor we we show number 20, in, including the Horn of Africa there, um, perhaps shows it worse than anywhere else. Various aspects of the sixth extinction. So, 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 so let me just read this bit here. On Boxing Day, 26 December 2004, a magnitude 9 earthquake struck off the northwest coast of Sumatra. This unleashed the tsunami that was on everyone's lips. The leading wave of the tsunami sped west, sped west across the Indian Ocean at 500 miles an hour. After seven, seven, seven and a half hours and a journey of 3,000 miles, it struck the coast of Somali with waves now down to about four feet. Some 90,000 persons died outright. And, and in terms of the sixth extinction, but the tsunami had a far more a far more far-reaching many menacing effect along the literal Somali coast. So along that Somali coast, along the Horn of Africa, what, what that tsunami dug up along that coastline was all the rubbish that, that, that Somalia was importing from Europe and elsewhere, I guess, but, but importing from Europe all sorts of rubbish that the tsunami had, had opened up. It looked beautiful and then it was seen as a rubbish dump, that Somali coast, a Western, a Western rubbish dump, that, that Somali was, was being paid to take this stuff. All sorts of horrible stuff, plastic, tin, um, all, all kind of waste you can possibly think of. Um, and, the, and the sixth extinction, yes, going, going back to, to my university days, I've been deeply concerned about the sixth extinction ever since since my 20s, ever since the early 1960s in the uni at, a, at the University of, of, of Johannesburg, the Vardashan, um, where I joined the mountain club and virtually every weekend through my BSc, through, through my honours, through my PhD, we, we were out in the, in the, in the Machalisburg and other mountains across South Africa, rock climbing, mountaineering, every weekend for years and years and years. And over that time, one could see the, the encroachment of humanity on nature. In 1960, it, it, was, it was absolutely pristine, the Machalisburg. Now, if you walk in the Machalisburg, there, there's, there, there's the platinum, platinum mines. You see this huge string of platinum mines. There was nothing of that there visible back then in 1960. So I've, I've been, throughout my adult life, I've been extremely concerned about the sixth extinction. And together with Martin, we've been extremely concerned about it. And, and all of these projects, from one alive, Earth alive, Africa alive, have kind of evolved out of that concern. Um, and from my side, we, we're, we're definitely going to finish all these projects and we're definitely going get, to get, get them published as soon as we possibly can, sooner rather than later. Okay. And here, the, the final slide. Here, here is back at our place in Pretoria. This, this is another one of our garden sculptures, a, a rather odd looking sculpture here. The, the Swiss cottage wood pile, we call it. And, and that is Martin De Witt on the right, and that is myself on the left, and that is Peter Nielsen in the center there. This is about four years, years ago. And, and we gathered together at that time uh, we, we were presenting a series of first-person short stories telling the, te telling the Homo sapiens corridor story um, at a theatre in Pretoria. And, 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 and so, so Peter Nielsen came up from the Cape, Martin came up from Port Elizabeth, and together we were organising that. Peter Nielsen is the chap who found Pinnacle Point. That, that is one of the most important of those of those archaeological sites along the Homo sapiens corridor near Mossel Bay. 
and and the Maltivo collection, which which Chris was speaking about, is behind that wood pile behind that metal door. The cars live outside. The little Maltivo collection lives inside. At least the little Maltivo room lives inside. Our collection is 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 at the, is at the Evolutionary Studies Institute at Wits University in Joburg, but but we borrow parts of it to to work on uh, the current volume that we're on is sitting behind this door here. And I'm working on that on that part of these dead. But okay, so so this this photograph again is saying thank you for the journey, Martin. It's been a wonderful journey, and I'm so sorry you are not part of it any longer. Having 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 left us around about six months ago completely by surprise. But thank you for the journey. It's it's been a wonderful journey and it will continue to be a wonderful journey. Thanks very much and thank you to you all for listening. Thank you. Bye. Thanks so much. Well, what do we do from here? Are there any questions, for instance, or, or how do we that's, ex that's exactly what we're going to do. If there are any questions or comments for John, uh, yeah. please just jump right in, unmute yourself, jump right in. I see Morris has unmuted himself. Okay. Morris, will you use that? Um, yes. Have I unmuted? Hello. Hello, yes. Hello. Can uh, you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Hi. <clears throat> no, thanks for the talk. Okay. Uh, really pretty fascinating to get a, a recap of the corridor uh, story. Okay. which we heard about way back and um yeah um we in a way also followed it up with um actually developing certain uh geo heritage sites uh, along the corridors and yes. that's a, a, story, a bit of a story that we actually talked about richard and myself and alan Lock uh, roxton um yes. a few weeks ago so okay. it's it's really in filling in filling in quite a few of the uh, ideas to fill in a lot of the details yeah. Uh, of geo heritage details along these corridors for oh. journey for, for geo tourism geo heritage tourism yes. and the idea also as you mentioned now is to establish holistic tours bringing in all all aspects from the from the earth sciences right through to the biological sciences and showing the importance of the geology that that underpins everything that we that we see yes so um yeah th that's uh, hello Hello, yes, I'm here. Thank you. Oh, you're still there, yeah. So, um, th thanks for, for introducing us again to the to the corridors. It's something that, as I say, um, we've got uh, thinking along very similar lines and developing, as I say, nodes of sort of more specific interest uh, along those corridors and encouraging people with information uh, to to contribute to this. And, and and there are a lot of people working often in isolation on various areas along yes. these corridors, if you like. And uh, we'd like to get their, in, their sort of more detailed input on, on the geo heritage um, uh, of, of their particular areas to, to, uh, to make it a more inclusive thing for certainly for South Africa for starters and then moving into, into uh, the rest of Africa as well. So th thanks again for, for uh, I think Martin's corridors uh, initiated the whole thing of, of trying to develop these areas in, in, in this kind of way. And, and it, would be, it would be wonderful, Morris, if we can coordinate our efforts going into the future. Absolutely. And we'd like to do that. We'd like to work with as many people as possible to, uh, to um, yeah, because it needs input from, from all sorts of people to, to develop this further. Okay, and, and I, I will certainly make contact so we can we, we can push things to get to, uh, forward together. Fantastic! We we really would appreciate that. Uh, yeah, for sure, John. Excellent. Thank you, Morris. That's terrific. Thank you for that. Hello. Any further questions or comments? Hi, John. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think, you know, this is Chris Hatton. Um, yeah, yeah, I think what's interesting is, you know, when you started all of this, you 
you uh, quoted Kofi and I'm saying that um, uh, he hoped that it, there was a catalyst for action to steer us away from the dangerous course of business as usual. <laughs> and I think, um, you know, this COVID curse, the blessing of it is maybe that this is, you know, this really has been the catalyst that's steering us away from the dangerous course of business as usual. Thanks, John. Okay, pleasure. And thanks for that comment. Thank you, Chris. And thanks again for, for, for appearing out of, the blue, out of the blue about a month ago and asking me to give a talk on this. Thank you, Chris. Yes, it, it, we've kind of forgotten, you know, all the th we've forgotten so much of what Martin has initiated. Uh, yes. I think we owe it to him to try to carry it on. We, we, we certainly will do. We certainly will do. Thank you, Chris. Are there yes. any more questions or comments? Uh, they, they would be very welcome if there are. Thanks. If there are no more questions or comments, um, I'd just like to give a word of thanks to, to, to Tacoma Strategies, who is uh, the September sponsor for these lockdown lecture series, as well as some of the Geo Heritage series lectures put together by Chris. So thank you very much, Tacoma Strategies and, and Matt Mullins in particular. John, thank you for the presentation. Major, thank it's, you. It's put Martin's corridor concept, which is back into the limelight again. And this has been something that's been a long time developing. It probably needs to be marketed a little bit better and maybe we can do that in the future. Okay, that, that's um, really nice if you can help us with that, thank you. So with, with that, uh, one last chance for question or comment? No. Uh, with, Thank you with, so much, John. Thanks, 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 Nadine, yes. And sorry, who, who was speaking that just now? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. That was, that was Craig Smith. Oh, Craig Smith. Thank you. Thank you very much, Craig. Thank you. And, and thanks, Nolene, and thanks, Chris, and thanks, Morris, and thanks, everybody else. And, and okay, with, and with that, I'll close the meeting. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.